Hello and welcome to Bite Sized MRCP, a manageable way to digest the things that you need to know for your MRCP exam. We are two junior doctors based in the UK who have passed all three parts of MRCP within the last five years and want to help you do the same. We are not associated with any MRCP examination organisations and the materials covered are by no means an exhaustive list of what can come up in your exam or indeed medical advice. Please refer to your college of entry or your friendly supervisor for further questions regarding the exam and syllabus. If you like the sound of what you hear today and would like to join us for more bite sized revision, give us a thumbs up or press the subscribe button. Now, without further ado, let's get into today's topic. Today, we'll be covering the last in our series on the spondyloarthritides, um, looking at enteropathic arthritis, and also we'll be recapping what we've learnt about the inflammatory arthritides over the last few um, presentations. So firstly, enteropathic arthritis, which is part of the HLA B27 associated arthritides. What is enteropathic arthritis? So this is a spondyloarthritis associated with inflammatory bowel disease, um, by which we mean either Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis, usually occurring in those with extensive colonic involvement. Enteropathic arthritis can affect up to 25% of patients with IBD, and there is a male predominance of 3 to 1 approximately. Some key points to consider is that you should really be thinking about bowel disease in any patient with an undefined or an intermittent inflammatory arthritis. And the episodes of arthritis are not necessarily in keeping with flares of IBD. Enteropathic arthritis usually affects the knees and ankles, so that's the sort of pattern of joint involvement you'd be looking for on examination. There are certain extra-articular features associated with IBD and arthritis, um, and these can be remembered using um, the word pain. So firstly, P for pyoderma gangrenosum, A for aphthous stomatitis, I for inflammatory eye disease, um, and this is more common in Crohn's, and N for nodosum, by which we mean erythema nodosum, and that can affect up to 15% of patients. Investigations are very similar to if you were investigating someone with suspected, any suspected uh, axial spondyloarthritis. So you do x-rays and if necessary, MRI scans, and the findings will be very similar to those with an axe spar. So perhaps evidence of sacroiliitis, or evidence of inflammatory disease within the spine. There may be an elevated ESR and CRP. Um, and with regards to specific tests, um, P anchor can be positive in 55 to 70% of patients with ulcerative colitis, but we'll hear more about that when we cover ulcerative colitis in further depth in the gastroenterology section. The management of enteropathic arthritis um, really starts with steroids, which can help with both bowel and arthritis symptoms. Um, we then move on to the um, conventional DMARDs, um, which can include sulfasalazine or methotrexate. Um, the first may be used also for bowel symptoms. The second tends not to be used for bowel symptoms typically. And in terms of biologics, um, these patients may have anti-TNF drugs or secukinumab or ustekinumab as well. Secukinumab is an IL-17 inhibitor and ustekinumab is an IL-12-23 inhibitor. So that was a brief overview of enteropathic arthritis and it doesn't tend to form the focus of um, many MRCP questions typically and may in fact come up as part of a wider question on axial spondyloarthritis more generally. Um, to conclude this series of um, videos on inflammatory arthritis. We're just going to recap some of the um, concepts we've learnt um, in the past few videos um, in the next set of questions. So the first question is which of these HLA subtypes is associated with rheumatoid arthritis? So your options are HLA-DR2, B27, 
DR3, DR4 or B51. So the correct answer to this is HLA DR4. Um, it's worth knowing what each of these HLA subtypes are associated with as part of particularly the MRCP part one, um, as they do tend to come up quite frequently um, and it's worth committing to memory um, so that those questions can be done um, quite quickly um, in the exam. Question two, which of the following is not a typical examination finding in someone with rheumatoid arthritis? So the options are Z deformity, swan neck deformity, ulnar deviation of the MCP joints, Heberden's nodes or Boutonniere deformity. So the correct answer here is Heberden's nodes, um, which you'll remember is a feature of osteoarthritis along with Bouchard's nodes. Um, it is worth remembering that you can have coexisting osteoarthritis and rheumatoid arthritis in the same patient. Um, so that's just worth remembering when you're examining someone, for example, in PACES. Question three. A 30 year old lady with rheumatoid arthritis attends clinic. She is on 20 milligrams methotrexate weekly and 200 milligrams hydroxychloroquine once a day. She is noted to have multiple tender and swollen joints with a DAS 28 score of 4.7. So a decision is made to increase her methotrexate dose to 25 milligrams weekly. Which of the following blood tests are most important to monitor closely? So here we have a combination of pairs of blood tests. So which of these pairs are most important for the monitoring of methotrexate? So the options are full blood count and liver function tests, liver function tests and bone profile, bone profile and renal function, renal function and full blood count, or thyroid function. Now, when you're initially assessing someone with rheumatoid arthritis, you may actually do all of these tests. Um, and indeed, throughout the monitoring of someone with rheumatoid arthritis, uh, particularly someone on um, an immunosuppressive drug, uh, you may also wish to continue monitoring most of these blood tests. But the ones that are most pertinent for methotrexate are full blood count and liver function tests. Question four, which of the following is inhibited by tocilizumab? So the answer here is interleukin-6. Just going through the um, others, CD20 is inhibited by rituximab, TNF-alpha is inhibited by several drugs, so example in, examples include adalimumab or infliximab. Um, IL-1 is inhibited by anakinra, and CTLA-4 is inhibited by a batacept. Question five. Which of the following is not typically found on X-ray imaging of the sacroiliac joints of a person with axial spondyloarthritis? So here we have several um, different features, which may or may not be true. Um, so blurred joint margins, subchondral erosions, osteophytes, sclerosis and fusion. So the one that stands out here is osteophytes, um, as that is usually seen in someone with osteoarthritis and not an axial spondyloarthritis. Question six, a 25 year old male presents with a painful swollen knee, urethritis and a pustular rash to the soles of his feet. Inflammatory markers are raised and an infection screen, including STD screen, identifies the presence of chlamydia trachomatis. Which other clinical feature is he most likely to have? So this is a diagnosis of um, reactive arthritis, specifically Reiter's syndrome. Um, and you may recognize the pustular rash to his feet as being keratoderma blenaragicum. So the options here are mouth ulcers, scleritis, onycholysis, conjunctivitis or a vasculitic rash. And the correct answer is conjunctivitis as part of the triad of Reiter's syndrome, which is conjunctivitis, arthritis and urethritis. Question seven, which of the following features is not associated with psoriatic arthritis? HLA B27, nail pitting, arthritis mutilans, ulnar deviation of the MCP joints or dactylitis. 
So as we've seen in a previous question, ulnar deviation of the MCP joints is usually seen in patients with rheumatoid arthritis and not classically in psoriatic arthritis. All of the other answers may be associated or seen in someone with psoriatic arthritis. And finally, a 30 year old gentleman with psoriatic arthritis has very active disease with significant lower back pain and stiffness. He has only been on methotrexate in the past. Which of the following is the next best treatment option, provided there are no other contraindications? So you may already have some ideas um, as to what he would require next, especially given his significant back pain symptoms. So the options are tocilizumab, adalimumab, rituximab, hydroxychloroquine or cerilumab. So the only drug listed here that's licensed for psoriatic arthritis is adalimumab, which is a TNF-alpha inhibitor. None of the others are used for the treatment of psoriatic arthritis. So thank you for listening to this episode of Bite Size MRCP. Um, if you like what you've heard today, um, give us a thumbs up and hit the like and subscribe button below to make sure you don't miss our next episode. Um, let us know in the comments which topics you would like to hear from in future and we will see you for our next episode.